Thailand's roads are statistically the second deadliest in the world, claiming over 32 lives for every 100,000 people annually. But one specific stretch of asphalt on the island of Phuket pushes those numbers into the red zone. This is Highway 4029, better known as Patong Hill, a treacherous 3.6-kilometer climb with a terrifying maximum gradient of 19% that literally melts the brakes off 15-ton tourist buses. To stop the carnage, engineers are now preparing to punch a hole straight through the granite core of the Nakad mountain range. The project is the Kathu Patong Tunnel, a 1.85-kilometer subterranean bypass originally designed as a massive 17-meter-wide twin-tube colossus, wide enough to fit a five-story building inside. But after financial failures and political shuffles, the blueprints have been slashed, the safety buffers removed, and the diameter cut nearly in half to just 10 meters. With mixed traffic of scooters and heavy trucks, now forced into a single, tighter tube, engineers face a critical question. By trying to fix a death hill, are they accidentally building a death tube? To understand why this tunnel is a matter of life and death, you have to look at the geography of Phuket. The island is essentially split in two by a north-south granite spine. On the east side, you have Kathu and Phuket town, where people live. On the west side, you have Patong Beach, where the money is made. For decades, the only way to get between them was to go over the mountain. Locals have demanded a tunnel for over 20 years championed by figures like former Patong Maya Pian Ki Sin, but it always stalled due to budget fears and environmental lawsuits. The turning point wasn't a meeting, it was a disaster. In October 2022, torrential monsoon rains saturated the soil slopes of the Nakad Hills. The poor water pressure became too great for the earth to hold, and a massive landslide wiped out a 500-metre section of the road, severing the island's main artery. Traffic was paralysed, it was a geotechnical wake-up call that surface roads on these weathered tropical slopes are ticking time bombs. The Expressway Authority of Thailand, or EXAT, initially tried to launch the tunnel as a premium toll road using a public-private partnership, asking investors to front the 14 billion baht cost. But when they opened the bidding in 2023, the room was empty. No private company wanted the risk. Now the Department of Highways has taken over with a new mandate. Build it cheaper, build it faster, and make it free. But does cheaper mean safe? Let's talk about the physics of the problem this tunnel is trying to solve. The current road, Route 4029, is a geometric nightmare. In road engineering, we typically want to keep highway gradients below 5% or 6% to ensure heavy vehicles can climb without overheating and descend without losing control. Paitong Hill hits gradients of up to 19% in the hairpin turns. To put that in perspective, walk over to a treadmill and set the incline to the maximum. Most commercial treadmills max out at 15%. This road is steeper than that. Now imagine taking a 15,000 kilogram bus loaded with 40 tourists and sending it down that treadmill slope. The kinetic energy generated is massive. Drivers have to ride the brakes the entire way down. In the tropical heat of 35 degrees Celsius, those brake drums can heat up to over 500 degrees in seconds. This causes brake fade, where the brake fluid literally boils and turns into gas. Gas is compressible, liquid is not. So when the driver hits the pedal, it goes to the floor, and nothing happens. The bus becomes a missile, the tunnel changes the physics entirely. By boring through the mountain at a lower elevation, the tunnel alignment maintains a gentle gradient of under 3%. This eliminates the need for aggressive braking. But getting through that mountain requires defeating the geology of the knackered hills. The mountain is composed of biotite granite, a very hard igneous rock. In the deep center of the mountain, this rock is massive, meaning it has very few fractures and is incredibly strong with a compressive strength that can exceed 150 megapascals. That's about five times stronger than the concrete used in skyscrapers. However, the entrances or portals are a different story. In tropical climates like Thailand, the intense rain and heat chemically rot the rock from the top down. This creates a deep layer of weathered granite and residual soil that can extend dozens of meters deep. This material looks like rock, but crumbles like sugar when you touch it. Tunneling through this transition zone, from soft, wet soil to hard granite, 
is the most dangerous part of the job. If the roof collapses here, it causes a sinkhole on the surface. So how do they build it? You might expect a giant tunnel boring machine, or TBM, like the ones used for the London Crossrail. But for the Kathu Patong project, they are using the drill and blast method, specifically the new Austrian tunneling method, or NATM. Why? Two reasons, geology and length. TBMs are incredibly expensive to set up. You have to build a factory just to assemble them. For a short tunnel of only 1.85 kilometers, it's not worth the cost. Also, TBMs struggle when the ground changes rapidly from soft soil to hard granite. They can get stuck. Drill and blast is surgical. Here is how the cycle works, step by step. First, a jumbo, a massive computerized drilling vehicle, drives up to the solid rock face. It extends multiple arms and drills a pattern of holes about three to four meters deep. Next, they pack those holes with emulsion explosives. They don't blow it all up at once. That would damage the surrounding rock. They use millisecond delays. The center holes explode first to create a void, and then the outer holes explode fractions of a second later to collapse the rock into that void. Once the smoke clears and the ventilation fans suck out the toxic fumes, huge loaders scoop up the muck, the broken rock. Then comes the most critical step, support. Before the rock has a chance to fall, they spray it with shotcrete, concrete sprayed at high velocity through a hose. They also drill four meter long steel bolts directly into the rock to pin the layers together. This turns the rock itself into a structural arch. It's primal, loud and effective. But the engineering challenge has recently shifted from how to dig to what they are digging. Originally, Exat designed this as a mega build. They wanted two huge tunnels, each 17 meters in diameter. A 17 meter circle has a cross-sectional area of roughly 227 square meters. That is gigantic. It was designed to carry two lanes for cars, plus a completely separate barrier protected lane for motorcycles. This was the gold standard for safety. But when the Department of Highways took over to cut costs, they made a controversial decision. They shrank the design. The new specification calls for a tunnel width of just 10 meters. Do the math on the area. A 10 meter diameter circle has an area of about 78 square meters. That is a 65% reduction in size. This saves a fortune in excavation costs and concrete lining. It also makes the tunnel much more stable because a smaller roof span is less likely to collapse during construction. However, the trade-off is operational space. In the 10 meter design, the separate motorcycle lane is gone. Now, scooters, which make up the majority of traffic in Phuket, must share the same asphalt with delivery trucks, tourist buses, and luxury sedans inside a confined tube. This introduces a terrifying aerodynamic phenomenon known as the piston effect. When a large truck pushes through a small tunnel, it acts like a piston in a syringe, pushing a wave of high-pressure air in front of it and creating a suction vacuum behind it. In a 17-meter tunnel, this air has plenty of room to disperse. In a tight 10-meter tunnel, that air blast is concentrated. For a car, this is just a bit of wind noise. For a 100-kilogram scooter, a sudden blast of displaced air from a speeding bus can destabilize the rider, potentially pushing them into the wall or under the wheels of the traffic. The Department of Highways argues that strict speed limits and enhanced safety measures will mitigate this. But physics is unforgiving. This reduction also complicates the ventilation system. In a tropical climate, you aren't just fighting exhaust fumes, you are fighting heat. The ambient air temperature is 30 degrees. The engines are running at 90 degrees. There is no cool air to flush the system. The tunnel will rely on longitudinal jet fans. These are giant jet engines mounted on the ceiling that produce high decibel sounds to push the air column from one end to the other. In a mixed traffic tunnel, the stakes for ventilation are lethal. Cars have cabin air filters, motorcyclists do not. They are breathing the tunnel air directly. If traffic stalls inside the tube, which happens constantly in Phuket, carbon monoxide levels will spike. The ventilation system must be tied to smart sensors. If CO levels exceed 50 parts per million, those jet fans have to kick into overdrive instantly to flush the poison or you risk riders passing out mid-transit. 
But poisonous air isn't the only thing flowing through these hills. The project has faced fierce legal warfare from environmental groups, specifically the Stop Global Warming Association, led by activists who have successfully sued to stop other mega-projects. Their primary argument is about water. The knackered hills act as a watershed, a natural sponge that catches rain and feeds the aquifers for the island. Drilling a tunnel is essentially like drilling a drain hole into the bottom of a bucket. If they hit a water-bearing fault zone, they could accidentally drain the groundwater, drying up wells and streams on the surface. To stop this, engineers will have to use pre-excavation grouting, injecting cement into the rock ahead of the drill to seal the cracks before they even dig. Financially, the project is now estimated at around 16 billion baht, funded by the state with a targeted opening date of 2030. The Kathu Patong Tunnel is a compromise between engineering ambition and economic reality. It trades the safety of a massive 17-metre expressway for the affordability of a 10-metre utility tunnel. It solves the brake failure crisis of the Death Hill, but it asks motorcyclists to brave a new kind of challenge underground. Will the airflow calculations hold up when thousands of bikes and buses jam into that tube during rush hour? We will find out in 2030. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the engineering wars of Thailand, smash that like button and subscribe to the Ultimate Mega Builds channel. We are tracking the world's biggest construction projects, so turn on your notifications to see what we dig up next.